Hi, my name is Wyatt Groth, the owner of Hammersmiths, and you're watching another video on the Hammersmith DIY products channel. And today I want to talk to you about how to use a hand swager for the purpose of wire ballast rating. So when I say hand swager, what do I mean? What type of ballast raid system is that used for? Well, you can see here with the various different systems we have, in an earlier video I showed you how to use a hydraulic swager for these types of fittings where the wire goes into the end. The hand swager method is used for this system here, system three. And what it revolves around, the wire going through a ferrule, looping back through itself and then being crimped. And the reason why the hand swager can be used in this particular setup and not the hydraulic swager is the type of material used. This is actually a copper and it's a, it's a softer material, hence you don't need the same sort of pressures that you do with a hydraulic swager. The other beauty of this particular tool is it's got a built-in cutter. So from a point of a cost point of view, the hydraulic swage, you have to buy the Holland hydraulic swage, which is not overly expensive, but then you also need a cutter to cut the wire. This particular tool has a built-in cutter as well as a swaging mechanism. So this is the box that it comes in when you purchase the unit. Well, I've got one here that I've taken out of the box. This is the unit. And as I said to you before, it's got uh, three different crimps. One designed for um, 2 mil wire, another one for 2.5, and another one for 3.2. The type of systems we're working with here is obviously 3.2, so you would use the top one there. What it actually crimps is this product here. It's very hard to see, but it's a small ferrule, and the wire goes through it, loops around, and comes back through again. And what you're actually doing is crushing this fitting with these particular jaws. The fitting itself is manufactured out of a copper nickel product, which uh, is much softer than the stainless steel, hence why you don't need the added pressure of a hydraulic setup. Just this, this hand swager is more than enough. So let's uh, demonstrate how this actually gets used. So what we have here is some seven by seven wire, and you'll recall in another video that I spoke about the different types of wires. We have some one by 19 here, but this just will not bend enough to be able to loop around this thimble. So we don't recommend the 1x19, we recommend either the 7x7 seven seven or the 7x19. So all you do, you take your ferrule, you slide it through, you loop it back on itself and you go back through the hole again to create this loop knot. You then can grab yourself the thimble and pop that in there like so and then slide the it up on itself. It's a bit, little bit fiddly to do, but once you get into the habit, it's it's it's, it's quite simple. Um, let's just put that in there like so, and then push up on itself to create that necessary tension. It's pretty good. That can be a bit loose, but it doesn't really matter when you actually start putting the tension. It's going to pull it right up. The whole point of the thimble is to protect the wire from whatever the type of um, thing it's pulling against. So for example, with a saddle here, when it hooks in through there, it's the thimble that's resting against the saddle and not the wire itself. So once you've got that set up like so, grab your cable cutters. And it's a little bit awkward here on the bench because obviously this would be in place. But basically, you put that in there like so. You bring it down, get it about centered once you've got it in place, bring it in. And we're done. Now you might remember I mentioned to you before that it's got a building cutter. It's a little bit hard to see here. I'll show you up show closer shortly, but it's got a cutter here on the side. So what you can do, pop that in there, open it up, pop that in there like so, bring it down, same thing again, cut that, and you got your wire cut. So obviously the beauty of that is, as you're reeling your wire off to do your job, you cut it to the correct size you want. So one tool does both applications, which saves you money, because obviously if you're going down the hydraulic swaging method, like I showed you before, you've got to buy the hydraulic swager, then you also have to buy a cutter. Now the cutters aren't overly expensive. This is actually one of the cutters here that we sell. But instead of having to buy this particular unit, 
this unit here does both things in one. So it saves yourself some money. So let's show a close up of that again. We have our ferrule here, we have our thimble, and we have our 7x7 seven seven cable. You put the ferrule through the cable, you can see it's taken up one side of it, there's still a hole there. You loop this around, and you poke it back through the cable there. Then what you can do, put your thimble in place, like so, and just slide that up. That's a little bit fiddly. Slide that up to secure it in place. Get nice and close if you can. Something like that's pretty good. Now you've got this excess here, but you still can cut that off afterwards. Or if you want to, you can slide that back down and instead bring this up further and fiddle around with it until you get it right. But the key part is you want to make sure the two the ferrule is as close to the thimble as possible so that it's not going to fall out in any way, shape or form. As I said, it's a little bit fiddly um, on this bench type setup that I'm showing you. Um, but uh, Squeeze that together. There we go. Done. And all we got to do, open this nice and wide. You can see here the different jaws that we have. Put that in the top one, like so. Get it centered. Got that in nice and close there. And ready, ready. Crimp it up. Release. And you can see how that looks. Yeah, you can if you want to. Come back down again. If you just want to make it a bit prettier, crimp the other end, like so. And do it on the same end, on the third end, if you, if you want to. It's not really necessary, but that's made look a bit neater. And then you can obviously either trim that end off or just leave it like so. But what happens with that is it slips over the end of this fitting. So you can see here, this is our, um, our fork fork bottle screw. This part comes out like so. That goes in there. Slips back on like that. Done. Easy as that. I hope you've enjoyed our video on hand swaging. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Hammersmith DIY Products. Also follow us on Facebook, which is also Hammersmith DIY Products. And our website, which is hammersmith.com.au, is where you can find all of these great products to purchase online. This is another video from Wyatt Groth, signing off.